Hi, and welcome to this introductory video for SMODE. Today we will be looking at the basic functions of the user interface to have all the tools necessary to start compositing in SMODE. The version we will be using today is the version 8.0 of SMODE Studio, which is an enhanced version of the current 7.7 .7 version with a few changes to the graphic interface, but nothing drastic. SMODE is a real-time compositing program which necessitates certain system requirements on the machine which we will be using. We recommend a NVIDIA GTX 580 or an equivalent and an SSD hard drive. An SSD is essential when working with video and streaming. Seeing as we will often be using a video format called HAP, which is a format made specifically to be decoded by the graphic card, in turn reading it a lot faster. The problem is that HAP is a heavy file format which requires a lot of hard drive access. So I'm going to open up Smode Studio. As you can see, we have a dialog box which is asking me to create a media directory. This is where all the media that I will be using will be regrouped, here to the left, and will be collated in a folder on my disk. You can see here that it is suggesting the documents folder, but I have already created a media directory called Smode Media on the desktop. And now we can see that it has appeared in the left column. So here I have all my media with a preview of the media and its information. Here, as you can see, we have all our media and underneath the previews. If you add media and you can't see it in this column or the preview window, you can update the cache using right click, choose update and Smode will automatically recalculate the preview of the media that you have in your folder. You can see the progression of this update in the Task tab, as well as all video exports from Smode. And here we have the last tab called Devices, which is useful when you would like to add a webcam, a MIDI controller, or an instrument to control your compositions in Smode. All this can be configured in the Preferences. So under Preferences, Control and Video Inputs, but we won't go into this for now. Part 2, the element tree, creating and manipulating layers, the parameter editor, and manipulating values. Okay, now we have created our media directory, we can go ahead and make a new composition. To do this, we have two choices. Either we choose File, New Composition, or Control N. This gives us a new dialog box with default parameters for the composition. These parameters can be changed later on, but for now, I'm going to leave the default settings. And here I have the interface. To start with, I'll explain the element tree and the parameter editor, found here in the right-hand column. To bring media into your composition, you use a simple drag and drop from the media directory, and you can see here that contrary to other programs, what should be on top in your composition will be found at the bottom of the tree. Here the castle should be at the bottom of the tree to be above the sky. You can also see some parameters that are available in the tree, For example, the layer and its fusion modes, which we can cycle through using up and down arrow keys. Another way to create layers in SMODE is by using the right click in the element tree box. In this menu, we can access everything in SMODE. However, the menu is contextual, meaning that if you right click on a 2D layer, you can access the 2D modifiers. If I create a 3D element and then right click on the 3D element here, I have access to all the 3D modifiers which I can use on this object. You can use the spacebar to activate or deactivate an element, or this little icon here, and last of all you have these green arrows which allow you to visually isolate an element in your composition. There's another way to create elements which is through the search bar, which is found up here. Using control space, I can then search for a sphere, for example. And down here, I have a sphere which I can add to my composition like this. To manipulate elements in the element window, you can use control D or control C, control V or control drag and drop. And I can also replace media by another media using alt drag and drop on the selected media. Replacing media can be done directly from the media directory as well as within the element window using alt drag and drop. Control shift G if you want to group a certain number of layers together. In this case, a group is an element with no fusion mode, meaning that each layer keeps its own fusion mode 
allowing us to organise our tree and place our elements as a group. The other method to group our elements is to select a few elements and either use a right click and choose Make Compo or with the elements selected hit Control Shift C. And that gives us a comp meaning a rasterized element to which I can add modifiers, which wasn't the case using the group. If we look underneath the element window, we find the parameter editor, where we can access and modify all the parameters of an element in the element tree or on the timeline, which we'll look into later. This parameter editor can be put into advanced mode here. And here you can access absolutely every parameter available that being said, in default mode, the parameters are fairly efficient. This parameter editor does a few things, such as generate loops, which we'll cover in the following shoot, but above all, it is used to precisely manipulate elements in the composition. For example, if I move the position, I can either manually type in a number or an expression, or by clicking and holding on the parameter and scrolling up and down to move my element. This works for all the parameters. Other ways of manipulating elements include control, click and drag, which moves the parameter a lot faster, shift to move it slower, and control, click and click to move the parameter in a very precise fashion. We can also copy parameters, either a single parameter or a group of parameters, for example, if I want to copy the position of this shrub onto my arch, I would right click and copy the 2D position, select the arch element and again in its position parameter, paste the 2D position and there you have the arch which is now at the place of the shrub. So imagine that you want to copy the scale, the rotation, the position and the anchor point which is symbolized by this green cross. From my arch to the shrub, then I'll click on the whole of this block which is indicated by the black bar. If I go into advanced mode, you can see render placement more precisely. So I go back and click on render placement, copy 2D placement, choose the shrub element again, go back to render placement and paste 2D placement and now I have all the position parameters of the arch on my shrub element. If I want to, I can also replace this by the default parameters by right clicking and choosing default value as you can see the shrub goes back to its original state. Now I'm going to quickly show you some other useful ways of editing your image. Right click on the shrub, go to placement and here you can adapt your image as you like. I'll leave you guys to explore that part. Part 3. The viewport. Manipulations in mode 2D and 3D. Using the edit mode to place layers in perspective. Now I'll explain the viewport and its different modes. By default, we are in 2D mode, which we can see up here in the right-hand corner. In 2D mode, we use the center click to zoom in and out, the middle click to move around in the viewport, and to select an element to move it, you select the layer in the tree and move it around like this. The mouse changes icon to show which manipulation we are using. If I want to scale an element while respecting its ratio, I hold down shift while dragging out its bounding box. For the 3D viewport, I will first of all create a 3D element. So right click, 3D layer, box, and a camera. Now you can see that if I selection the box, you can see that I have selected it, but I don't have access to its bounding box. However, I can move the camera, and to do this, I use Alt left click, and I can move around in the viewport. To move the box, I'll put the composition in 3D mode, as you can see here in the upper right hand corner and now I can access its handles. Here I am in translation mode. If I want to use rotation, I hit R, scale mode S, or I can click on these buttons over here. There's another 3D mode because what we have here is a mix between 2D and 3D. We can switch to the full 3D mode just above, and here we can see all the 3D elements, cameras, etc. For example, if I want to go into the camera view in this mode, I click on the camera icon and choose perspective camera as so. And I re-click on visualize camera. I also have access to the mixed view as well as four view mode. For that I need to be in 3D mode, double click and now we have three orthographic views and a perspective view. Double click again to go back to the perspective view. 
So back to 2D mode, as you can see, if I zoom and use center click, I'm still in 3D mode. So we'll go back to 2D mode so it's working as we initially had it. Down here we can also find edit mode, which can be used on certain types of layers. For example, if I put this shrub image in perspective, the edit mode permits me to place each point independently. If I'm not in edit mode, I wouldn't be able to achieve this. Part 4. The File Editor. Quickly navigate your media. Timelines and Function Editor. Creating Loops. Here the File tab accesses the media directory to give a preview of the images. It has two functions. A. If I choose an element in my tree, I can access all the media that can be found in the same file. And B. I can replace an element in the tree by another media. For example, if I click on the shrub and then double click on another image in my media tab, it will replace the shrub with this other media. This tab file also works for video, certain 3D objects and other modifiers. For example, if I choose the color modifier in the lookup table, then once I have my lookup table, then in the tab file I'll have access to all the lookup tables found in the same file. The last tab is a timeline which is used to create animations. So here we create the timeline to start animating our elements. There will be another tutorial to explain this in more detail, but for the moment if you want to know how to animate some elements, you can drag and drop a parameter inside the timeline. For the moment I will lock it. Drag and drop that element and then create some keys. If I want to animate a video, you simply drag and drop the video here. We have a block that appears which corresponds to my video. That didn't, <laughs> didn't sound very good. <laughs> that will create a simple loop with the box rotating on one axis. Right click and choose create linear loop. This creates a function Q. This function Q is an element that uses a function. There are a lot in SMODE, and here I can access this function in the function editor by choosing keyframe. I can add keyframes in my function editor. We can see this as a track or curves. So that's it for the interface of SMODE for the moment. The next tutorial will cover the compositing engine of SMODE. We will also go into how SMODE works internally as well as how to start creating compositions.